did a very good job so far in collecting information and I think we might need a little bit more as we already discussed um, and I would like you now to uh, to consider modeling the current task domain so I have in, in fact four things that I would like to discuss I would like to discuss the different viewpoints that we could take in modeling and I suggest we take all of them um, I would like to discuss representations I would like to discuss a tool which is UTERP, but you are free to use the tool or not. I mean, the things you showed now are just fine, right? But, but sometimes a tool could help. Uh, and then I would come back briefly to the ontology again and then give you some more work for this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Okay, so this is my program for now. I will just wait till you. You're, you've got it? Yeah. Okay. So, um, viewpoints. Well, when looking at a complex task situation, and you already discovered this very small shop is in fact a very complex uh, community of people working together using machines, using objects, trying to serve the client, time, uh, trying to, to earn some money. It's a rather complex situation. Now, if you would like to analyze it, there are different viewpoints, and the first viewpoint is, okay, is the viewpoint of people and machines. Uh, and the viewpoint of people and machines, which I call agents, uh, means in fact that I go to the shop and I look around and I see somebody washing the dishes, somebody making coffee, somebody being the boss, just overseeing, somebody being at the, the cashier desk uh, handling money and paper, somebody handling over the coffee and so on. Um, so I'm looking at people and machines, so this is a way of looking at it, right? And, and then you identify the people, and hopefully you make pictures, you identify the machines that could be relevant, and you make pictures, so maybe we, we should have even a nice picture of the machine that checks whether the money is okay, and, and, and so the, the, the machines that could be agents, for instance, so look at the agents, that's one. Now, the second one is look at the, the work. Because this company is a company to provide drinks, many different types of drinks, maybe some other things. Actually, I saw a glass box, they also sell, sell cups and some, some kind of toys, I, as far as I could see. So they sell things, including lots of drinks, coffee and other stuff. Um, so what are the tasks? Well, the tasks are to prepare the drinks and, and, and to... Uh, and, and to take the money and, and to make sure that the money is okay and, and make sure you give back the right money and, and make sure that if you have a regular customer you make him the customer a VIP so the customer will come back and you advertise so this is the activities, the tasks so, but this, if you look at these things you, in a way you look at a different way than when you look at the agent and obviously the third one um, is that, that you can look at, at the context, the things, the objects, the objects in an environment, which means that you, you would have a picture, maybe literally a picture, or at least an understanding of there's chairs here, and, and, and there's a box at the door of the coffee shop is, is, is a box to put in the trash, right? So if you drink your coffee, then you could put, and I found out that if you try to do that, then the, the, the cashier would say, give it to me. So he is also collecting trash. And, and he wants to collect it and not get it in the box. So people have lots of tasks here that are in the environment. Because I could also get a lid on my cup and I could walk out of the door. And when I walk out of the door, I'm responsible for the trash myself. And I can no longer put it somewhere, right? So th this is about the objects in the environment. And, and some, some announcements are on the window, you can see it from outside. Some are in the window from inside. So things have a meaning in the environment, right? Thrash in the shops means that you can put it in the shop or you can give it to the cashier. Thrash out of the shop is your own responsibility. You got the cup and the lid, you walk away, you take care for it, right? So these are the three points of view. And, and now let me look at how to analyze. So let me first look at agents. So agents could be actors, individual humans, or the coffee shop or the personal uh, and could be machines like the cash machines or, or the machine that checks the money um, 
and, and actors could have attributes. So actors could, could, be, could have some kind of knowledge. Maybe it would be good if the cashier would speak a little bit of English, but the barista need not speak English as long as the cashier tells him what to make, right? So there are attributes, some skills, handling the, the machines, the barista needs special skills. I know to use a good coffee machine, you need to understand what it means to make coffee. So you need special skills. So for these actors, you need skills. And, and, and but, but for the, the machine that, that checks the money, the only thing the machine needs to do is to check the, 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 the money bills and, and, and check some kind of characteristics and say yes or no. So that is a machine with very simple attributes, but the machine should be very precise. Actually, the machine can detect things that humans cannot detect, right? Otherwise, the machine wouldn't be there. The cashier sometimes is not able to say it's wrong or correct money. The machine is able to do that, right? So it has special attributes. Um, and, and, and then these agents can take roles. And, and so the question is how to be assigned. We already found there is some kind of a schedule made by the boss. So the boss makes a schedule. The boss can tell to her employees, you will be a cashier tomorrow and you will be a barista tomorrow, right? So this is, um, uh, and, and then the matter is, are these roles, sorry, are these roles represented? Um, I didn't identify any way that you could see this is the cashier. But in some offices, somebody has a cap or somebody has a coat. In, in, in my culture, in, in, in hospital, uh, people, employees of the hospital have a white coat and some people have a stethoscope around their neck, which means they are a doctor. So this is a symbol. And, and in the airplane, that people have stripes. So the stewardess has a stripe and the, and the pilot has many more stripes to show. So, the, so there, is, there is symbols to represent which roles people take. Now, in the coffee shop, I didn't see that, but maybe there is. Actually, I think this is a symbol telling them that I'm a fit, right? It's now a symbol. If I, if I take this with me, they will, they will uh, well, I'm not sure, because I still don't understand what it means to have this car, especially when I get it full, right? Okay, so you see, these are things that I would like to know about agents, and, and maybe there's also an organization. So there's organization from who can take what roles. As far as I can see, maybe the boss can take all the roles herself. Is that true? Find out. Does she? Maybe she does. Uh, and, and, and there's delegation and mandate. I, I think that telling somebody to put the barista is a matter of mandate because you, um, you, you presume the barista knows his job and is an expert already in making coffee. So this is mandating. But you also know that that for the oh sorry for that um, that that for the um, for the the, the 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 machine to check the money it's delegation the machine should just look at the money and tell me it's fake money or it's real money right so uh, so so part of this you already did but I'm now going to give you systematic ways to look at things and ask the questions right so. Okay, so this is about the viewpoint of agents, which is the, the, the people and the machines that do things. Now, the next viewpoint is work. If we look at the work, we are looking at what are the different tasks and what is the goal of these tasks. So the, the tasks are cleaning, are making coffee, are uh, selling coffee, um, are maybe uh, uh, managing the budget, uh, and there could be more. So uh, tasks could be about actions, like doing things, and could be about communication like the, 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 the cashier telling the barista to make a coffee and so on, right? Or maybe the, the boss telling the, the, the employees, you will have the schedule for tomorrow, you will have work for, tomorrow, for the day after tomorrow. So, the, so this is also a task and it's a communication task. So maybe the only object is my word. I tell you the schedule. Maybe the schedule is not on paper, I don't know, could well be, it's just in the head of the boss, but she tells you, she tells you, you should be here on Friday, you should be here on Saturday, right? So this is a communication task, and it has a goal. The goal of the task is to make sure that somebody is handling the machine, somebody is selling the coffee, and so on, somebody is cleaning the shop, okay? So, um, now the task has a time structure, how tasks could be done in parallel or in sequence, so it's interesting to find out, does the coffee, does the barista already start making the coffee 
before I pay, or does she wait till the, the cashier says yes, it's paid, start making it, right? So, a question. Um, um, so tasks could also, like in parallel, um, there could also be alternative tasks. I'm, I'm not sure, but in some cases, he could do, do the task in different ways. Like he could he could put sugar in sugar in my coffee himself, or he could give me the coffee and give sugar separately. I don't know, but find out. Sometimes there is alternative. And finally, there's uh, what I call protocols, which is ways that the task should be performed. Maybe there's a protocol for the cashier that he should always check the money first before putting, uh, putting it in the, in the machine. I don't know. That, so the, or it, it could be just a strategy. Maybe, oh, sorry for that. Um, maybe the, 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 an expert knows how to do things step by step. But sometimes it's prescribed. If it's prescribed, I call it a protocol. If it's not prescribed, then I call it an expert strategy. The expert would do it in this way. Um, and, and this could be depending on the situation. Maybe in some cases uh, you would use, you would deviate from the protocol, right? If you know somebody quite well, maybe you, the, the cashier doesn't check the money because this person comes there every day for already a year and you know this person will never give me fake money, so you will just accept and not check. I don't know, but it could, it, in, in cases, depend on the situation. Yeah? Okay? Good. So, the third point of view is the situation. So, the situation is objects, things, but also messages and their structure. Um, and, and this includes the environment. So, this is inside of the shop or outside of the shop, um, and it even includes the history. History meaning that you know somebody who already has been there for many, many days, and, and, or somebody is new. Um, or the history could be that, that you know that this guy always wants an espresso, or a double espresso, which I would like. And I think some of you would try to convince the person to give me a double espresso, right? So based on the history, maybe based on the history that you told already the shopkeeper that this guy, which is me, wants a double espresso, then he would immediately give me the, the coffee I would like to have, right? So this is a history. A situation is based on what happened in the past. And, and in the shop, for instance, the employees know their task, so if the employee is not new, then the boss doesn't have to explain too much. But if a customer is new, then maybe the cashier would have to say, you have to look at the menu and make a choice. Right? Okay, so this is the third point of view, situation. 